Hello guys, I hope everyone is doing okay. Um, today we are going to be looking at something very, very important as usual, okay? And by the way, I hope that the videos that I'm putting out there is helping you during your interview. Please do always let me know how that has helped you. So, you know, I want to look at something that um, you might get when you go for your biomedical scientist interview. You might hear something like, we've talked about something like analyzer validation. So if you've not watched my video on that, go and watch it. So today I want to focus on reagent verification and validation. Reagent verification and validation. I would like to give you a little background. So by the way, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Lobodo. I've been working in the UK as a specialist biomedical scientist. And I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. So what do we mean by reagent verification? What is actually verification to start with? What is verification, okay? When you look at verification, you're looking at whether a product complies with a regulation. So you've gotten something delivered to you, so you now need to do something or test it to confirm that yes, this thing complies with the regulation. It complies with what the laboratory has ordered or want, okay? So now that is verification. And what is validation then? So validation on its own look at, you know, something that give assurance that a product meets the standard. So you, now you've known verification, you've known validation. So what is then reagent verification and validation? By the way, I want us to know that it might look like it's not very important, but know that I want you to know that when the UCAS come, like we mentioned about UCAS accreditation, it's also part of the paperwork they want to see. They want to see how have you guys have you guys been doing reagent verification and validation. They want to see that. Why? Because it's a good laboratory practice to do reagent verification to make sure that what you want to use in the lab is according to the standard that it meet up the requirement. In other words, reagent verification and validation they are is a form of quality management system to ensure that that the laboratory is functioning according to the you know uh, stipulated regulation now what do we do then i'm going to give you a little story about it so when you receive a reagent or you receive a product it can be anything so when i mean reagent i mean it can be product you know uh, it can be uh, let's say malaria kit it can be something like um typhoid kit it can be something like hepatitis kit it can be so you know, it can be something, anything that you receive in the lab that is a material, you need to verify that thing and then validate that thing. Until this thing is done, you should not use that in the laboratory. It's a good quality management system. And that's why once you receive the product, of course, you document it, say, this is what I've received, this is when I receive it, this is the quantity that I received and all that. After you've done that, you check the lot number, okay, of that thing, you know, make sure that, for example, make sure that what you have, what you guys have ordered or requested was what was delivered to you guys. You also document, so in your documentation, you also include the lot number. You also, it's also important when you get a material to go on the company website to make sure that that lot number, that they've certified it, that it is up to standard. Okay, so because each of these very products comes, they have a certificate of it showing that yes, this is up to standard and they will sign it. So if they don't send it with the product, you need to go on their website to check that yes, there's a certificate signed, you know, for that very lot number indicating that it, they, they verified it, they validated it that it is up to the standard and it will do what, you know, um, it's meant to do. Now, what do you do then? So after you've received it, you've documented it. You've checked the, certi the certified uh, document, okay, from the company. Everything is okay. The next thing you do as part of the verification and validation is then to test that product. So that product, whatever thing is meant for, you test it to make sure that it will give you the result. So you test it with positive sample. You test it with negative sample. Let me give you an example. Let's say something like malaria kit, okay? I'm trying to use something very simple but remember it can be anything guys so let's say something like malaria kit you receive malaria kit how would you know that that malaria kit is working how you are going to know that it is working or that is maintained the standard is that you need a control sample positive sample to put it to run it with the kit and let it is supposed to once it shows you positive with the positive sample then it is acceptable now the negative one should show you negative so if you use 
positive control and negative control and run it on that very kit okay it should be able to show you yes the positive one should turn positive the negative one should turn negative then it gives you confidence that that very kit would is you know is up to the standard is according to regulation so the first thing you do is to do the testing you've done your documentation then the next thing is to do the testing once you've done the testing and everything confirm okay you've done the testing everything confirm to the regulation to the according to what the company said that that thing will do so after you've done all the testing with your positive and negative control and everything work well i would like to use something like let's say something like in blood transfusion so you've done you let's say it's something like card grouping so you use that card to do both blood group a blood group b blood group o blood, whatever so and each one each one of them come out exactly what it's supposed to be blood group a come out as blood group a b come out as b O come out as O. Once you have done that testing and everything is working or appear to be working, then you can ask, okay, this is okay. We can now use it. So that is actually verification and validation. So you are very you verified that that thing is working. So once you verified it and it's working, so that time you are doing the testing, okay, you've done the documentation and you are doing the testing, okay, that is verification. Once the test has given you the expected result, that then gives you assurance that that very kit or that very material or that product is working according to the standard. That is then validation. Then you can now put a date and say, you validated this in social and so that it cannot be used in the laboratory. Do you understand? Now, there's also something we call end of batch verification or validation as well. So you've used this material and it's about to expire. Or is about to finish to make sure that because you've tested that material at the beginning so i for you to to give you confidence that that material is still working even towards the end even at the end point even to even when it's about to expire you also do verification and validation again so you also test that reagent again that product again to see whether it will still give you accurate result or according to the standard so once it still gives you accurate result it gives you confidence that that reagent you know worked from the beginning when you start using it even towards the end after you stop using it so that is called end of batch verification and validation so why are we doing this we are doing this testing because we want to have this confidence that the test the product that we have you know when we use it to run a test it's going to be um, reliable, it's going to be reproducible, it's going to be repeatable, it's going to be sensitive. So we want to make sure there's sensitivity, there's accuracy, there is pre precision, and also there is repeatability and there's reproducibility. So we just want to make sure that no matter how many times you use that product to do something, do that particular test, it will always going to give you a consistent result you know that is up to the standard so that is the whole essence of why you are testing it and once you are sure that you've done this and everything is working well the next thing you do is then to validate it sign and put the date that this is when you validated it here you go so the same thing similar with analyzer validation okay so what again if i'm to kind of summarize this you receive the product after you receive the product, you document what you've received, the lot number and all that. And of course, you check to make sure that, you know, the company they've signed, that they've tested that product and it is working, okay, with their certificate. Now, once you've done that, the next thing you then do is to test that material to make sure it's going to give you the result of what it was meant, what it is meant to give to you. Once you have tested it and everything seems to be okay, then you can then validate it. So when you are doing the testing, documenting that is verification after you've done the testing and everything seems to be working and you now accept it to now be used in the lab that is validation so here you go that is your reagent um, verification and validation and i hope this also help you thank you very much till i come back away again bye